being a fighter means to me, I mean, when you, when you think of fighters and you hear the word fighter, to me, I think of gladiators, you know, guys in the olden days fight to the death. I know we don't do that nowadays, but I think of, I think of gladiators, ninjas, samurais, superheroes, you know, that, that's what I think of a fighter. I think a fighter is, a, is many things and can be many things, so fighters, <laughs> fighters are special people. I never wanted to be an MMA fighter. My first dream was to be a kickboxer, you know. K1 was hot at the time, I was sick. You know, Grand Prix, you'd fight tournament styles. It'd be in Japan, Japan Japan made it look cool as you can get confetti when you win it, big, big belts, big trophies, you know, big paydays is all cool. And then uh, this is around when I was 16, I wanted to really be a K1 kickboxer. Came 18, nah. That was the era when uh, when BJ Penn was in the UFC. I think he was fighting George St. Pierre for the second time. I think it was the second time for the belt. And uh, in in Las Vegas, they disclosed how much you make, and I saw how much he was making, and I was like, damn, we need to get into MMA, and not kickboxing. But what I should have did was look into other sports and see what they was making, like baseball or something, and uh, be like, damn, we should have been in that sport, you know? So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, all jokes aside, I just, you know, some, some people are born for it, you know? I believe I was born to, I was born and put on this earth to fight, and um, over here, you know, a couple, the journey started in 10th grade, you know? I remember when I was a senior, 10th grade, two years fast forward, I was a senior, and, um, I had to make a choice, you know, is either go to college, fight, or do something in my life. And I remember telling everyone that I'm gonna be a UFC fighter one day, and uh, a lot of people laughed. And I guess it's safe to say I got to get the last laugh. <laughs> uh, the number one advice I'd give to someone starting their journey in mixed martial arts is, you know, just keep going. Just keep going, you know. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of bumps, there's gonna be a lot of downs. It's gonna feel like there's a lot of downs and ups in this game and you just gotta keep on grinding, you know? A lot of people think success is just this steady incline of going up, but it doesn't. Real success is up, down, left, right. A lot of downs, big jump up, back down. Just keep pushing, you know? Just keep striving for greatness. If uh, if they're trying to start in martial arts and, you know, and want to fight in mixed martial arts, I would say pick a discipline get really badass in that one discipline and then and then work on your other disciplines and, and you know make it make it just as badass but I would really feel, you know, like I like to tell all the young fighters coming up you know it's like foundation is key you know whenever you build a house you start you start from the foundation of the house you don't you know if you build a two story house you're not starting from the second story you're starting from the ground up so have a strong foundation and build up this is a question that everybody asks do you get nervous before you fight of course I do. If somebody tells you that they don't get nervous before a fight, even after having 100 fights, they're lying to you. Or they're just not from this world. Because at the end of the day, it's just nerves, you know? I love those nerves. I live for those nerves. Those nerves are telling me, you know, that nervousness is what's telling me that I'm alive, I'm ready. And, you know, it's just, it's getting you out there to fight. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's just what it is, you know. I get nervous before every fight. But every fight. Every fight I'm in the back going in my head and be like, what am I doing here? I told told myself this was the last time, the last time. But now I'm here telling myself this is the last time. But then I start thinking, like, what else can I be doing? You know what I mean? Like, I can't be... There's not too many other jobs that is going to be paying me this much. So, you know, at the end of the day, this is, this is what we got to do. 
you know, title and everything is cool. Everything that comes with the title is cool with the BMF title. But at the end of the day, having that guy be Justin Gaethje is what I'm looking forward to. You know, Justin Gaethje is at the top tier of his class. He's been one of the top five lightweights in the world for, you know, a couple years now. Not more than a couple years now. To share that octagon with him means a lot, you know. And then there's a lot of people talking about like, oh, this fight is crazy. Why you guys are doing this fight? This and that. Why, why Max, why don't you just wait for Taporio? Why don't you just wait for, why he should be fighting for, uh, he should be fighting for the 55 against Islam and blah, blah, blah. Not a lot of people know, you know, this game, it, <laughs> it goes by you fast, man. It goes by you quick. Nothing is promised. Nothing is promised. How much times we see someone promised uh, uh, a title shot and it never happened? How much times do you see someone fight for an interim title shot and it never happens? Me and Gaethje were the next guys respectfully up in our title shot, correct? But how much times does that, does that work? It doesn't work all the time. So at the end of the day, you know, it, with, with the Tapoya thing, everybody keeps saying, oh, you're the next one, this and that. It's like, am I really? You know, if, if I thought, I, I thought, not if, I thought this whole time in my mind that if Tapoya was to beat, was to beat, Volk in any way, he gets a Volk gets a direct rematch. Volk did enough work to earn himself a direct rematch, and everybody's like, "Oh yeah," but after the knockout and blah blah, Volk still earns it. He still earns it. He did what he did. He has a bunch of title defensive just because he went up to a weight class and lost. I don't think it should affect him at at, the, at his own weight class. So at the end of the day, I always thought that if Tapoya won, no matter what, I still would be waiting because Volk would get a direct rematch. And then even with the Gaethje situation, it's like who, who knew that uh, Charles was going to get a bad cut, you know? And and Islam couldn't turn around and fight, you know? If if, if I had my way, I would have made the Islam fight in February against against Justin if they really wanted a title shot of this that this and that. How do you? How does a man who got knocked out turn around faster than the guy who won that knocked him out and and fought in February? So. That was kind of mind blowing, but everybody keeps saying this and that. You wait, you wait in this sport. The sport goes by you, and it goes by you quick. So at the end of the day, all you can do is stay busy. You know, I am blessed with the opportunity to be in this situation with with Justin Gaethje, and we see what happens. You know, like I said, the BMF title is cool and all, but I'm looking forward to uh, to fighting one of the best lightweights there are in the world, and that's Justin Gaethje. And you know, I can't wait to uh, see what the highlights about. My bucket list of fighters that I would love to face is just the best. It's just the best. If you guys think this man is the best, I want to fight him. You know, no, no, no names really can really do come to mind. But if if this if this guy is considered what the best, and you guys think he's the best guy in the world, then I want to fight him. You know what I mean? And I can't say names because every day it changes. You know, when how much MMA is such a short-minded. You know, be a short-term memory loss fans, you know. One day someone's the greatest and then, then something happens and the next day something happens, you know. Like the next day something happens they forget about the, the what the man did. You know, at the end of the day, like I said, fighting in our sport, fighting in mixed martial arts, being a fighter is, is the hardest thing ever in this whole world. Any other sport, baseball, basketball, soccer, shoot, even F1. You know what I mean? Like, you can have a shitty race day. You can have a shitty day. But guess what? Next week, two days later, four days later, you got another match to remind people why you are great. When you fight, you fight one time, one night. You can look terrible. You can look like the... You can just have an off night. And you can't go back and step into the octagon for four to six months. Sometimes even longer. You are, you are blessed if you can fight in four months continuously fight four months and four months. That's three times in one year. You are blessed to have that. But most guys only fight two times. Some guys only fight once. And and you're only as good as your last fight. You know, like I said, I've been telling people, if LeBron James went out there on a Wednesday night, missed all his shots, he went 0 for, 0 for 10, no points, everybody's going to be booing him. Oh, man, this guy, you suck. You know, get off the field. But then Friday, Friday or Saturday, they have a game again. Guess what? He goes off 30 points. Didn't miss nothing from the field goal, you know? He's the greatest ever again. 
that's just what it is, you know. That's, that's how it is, you know. It's hard. It's hard to be a fighter in that sense, but I wouldn't want to have it out of the way, you know. You gotta have thick skin in this sport, and uh, only the strong survive. And UFC event, UFC Hawaii event in Hawaii. I would like to say it would look like me headlining against someone here, but. To be honest, I just don't know if we have a stadium for it. You know, our our, our low stadium right now, it just seems like it's going to take forever to get done. And I'll probably be done fighting by the time it does get done. And that's the only place because it'd be like 20,000 people. Right now, we only have like, I think Stan Scherf or whatever. It sits like 12, 12,000. Another one sits 10,000. To be honest, if they did a UFC event, I don't think so they'd put me on the card. Like, no, nah, no matter how sad it sounds and how whatever it is, and I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be like I'm too big of a star or whatever. I just think so. It's just like, if they put me on the card in, in a Stan Sheriff or, or in a Blaisdell, the ticket's going to look like, the ticket cost is going to look like how UFC 300 ticket cost is looking right now. Where the very high up ones is like a thousand dollars, and then the floor seats is gonna be like eight, eight to ten grand, and I don't think that's smart for my people. You know, if I never ever get to fight home, whatever. You know, I know there's a couple other Hawaiian fighters that that could probably uh, headline a headline a fight night or something here, and they would have to do it. You know, they would have to carry the torch on. Like I would, it would be, it'd be heartbreaking. If it ever happened when I'm in the UFC, but you know, like financial wise, I can see why I wouldn't be able to be on a UFC event. So that'd be tough, you know, that'd be a tough, tough pill to swallow. But if a couple of, of the other Hawaiian guys that's on top of the card, if they could get it, you know, they deserve it. Hawaii people deserve it, you know. Like I said, it would suck that I wouldn't be able to get on the card. Financially wise, I just. That's what I think, bro. If I'm just totally being honest, financially wise, I don't think it's going to be smart if they do have me on the card, if it's just a fight or even if for a title fight, like how, even if we had a title fight down here, we did something like, you need a big event. So, it's kind of be heartbreaking, to be honest, a UFC, heart, uh, UFC event without me being on it, you know. If if I had my deal way, we would have did it a couple years back, a little stadium, I think so, we could have did it. We would have found anybody in there in the middle of the stadium would have been a ra it would have been a rager, as Hawaii's people would say, and uh, it would be amazing. But you know, at the end of the day, if it's not in the cards, it's not in the cards. You know, and I understand, I understand now that I'm here with the UFC and a little bit more of a businessman. So, kind of, you know, you, it is what it is, or it is what it was, and yeah. But you know, one thing I think the UFC can still give me is is my floor shorts, and I'm not giving up on that. I believe that we're gonna get a floor short sometime, hopefully soon, and uh, we we'll see what happens. You know, I mean, if I'm not gonna be able to have an event in Hawaii, or even if they do, and I'm not gonna be able to be a part of it, the least they can do is give give the man a floor shorts, right? So you know, we're seeing people with purple, we're seeing people with pink. Give me my damn floral. I want it. The people want it. UFC likes to give what the people want. So, floor shorts. Come on, UFC. Put a trigger. What rule would I change or could change if I had one? Um, I couldn't tell you. I mean, they're kind of changing now. California is. It's that, it's that rule of like playing the system of touching the ground, getting back up, touching the ground, touching the ground. That's kind of like... Uh, it's kind of crazy, you know. I think a down opponent should be a, po a opponent on his knee, or knees. One knee down is fine, because I'll still be three points, one, two, and then three. Because this touching stuff, when people like touch on the ground and and go down and kind of like they see a knee and they touch the ground, it's kind of kind of playing the fence, you know. So at the end of the day, I would probably want to change that rule. One thing that I did not do in a fight that I want to do before I retire. I mean, flying triangle. A flying triangle would be pretty sick. Hit a flying triangle in the fight, that'd be, that'd really be ideal. You know, I'd love to hit a flying triangle. I love triangles. I know about flying. 
I don't know about trying it though. I'm always, you know, you see those, you see those nightmares of people trying to jump in and knock them themselves out, hitting their head or something. So, imagine, imagine that they get knocked out, knocked down or whatever from a punch. I go in there, I try to do a flying triangle, knock myself out cold. That'd be, that'd be pretty terrible. The biggest lesson I learned in my UFC career so thus far was just keep fighting, man. Just keep fighting. The more fights, the better. You know, you know, don't, 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 don't wait around. Don't sit around. Don't wait for things to happen. If you want something, go make it happen and uh, go out there and get the job done. You know, just, uh, just get to work, get to work. You know, don't sit by, don't, don't wait for a certain fights. Don't wait for, for perfect timing. Go make your timing and uh, go out there and get the job done. I don't, I don't really train with too much UFC fighters. Uh, I mean, I, I really like just staying at my home gym and training, training with my coaches and, 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 and my, my teammates. But if I really had the choice, and I know he's going to be mad because I know he's watching this video, if I don't say his name, he's, a, he's an old sensitive guy. His birthday is actually today. Uh, you know, I know this, this video is going to get posted later on, but happy, happy birthday, Mr. Daniel Cormier, the second daddest man on the planet. I would love to train him. You know, I would love to train with him. Pick his mind. Um, I just love to beat him up. You know, what I mean, I think so. I think so. He think that he probably is lying on me. He is like a ton. You know, what I mean, he weighs a ton. He probably weighs two tons now that he's uh that he's not training or whatever. Oh boy, his suits is every time I call him, he's huffing and puffing and having a hard time breathing over the phone. I'm like, DC, you need to do something. You need to get work out, man. Like, you just think golfing is fine. And he, he's not one of those golfers where he walks the field. He, like, he has the golf cart. And he drives around, bro. And he's drinking something all the time. I don't know if it's alcohol or soda or something. Or they're good doc. It's probably a good doc. Like I said. Uh, but, yeah. If I had a choice, it would be Daniel Cormier. I'd love to learn. I'd love to pick his mind. And then, like I said, I'd love to train. I'd love to train. Maybe we can do some kickboxing training. And then we can do some wrestling training. So, that'd be fun. What I'm looking f most for is just fight week. You know, this fight week at UFC 300, you know, I think uh, the UFC have uh, some things up their sleeves that they're going to bust out. You know, the big 200, they did the cage reveal with the golden mat. Um, you know, we're seeing colors now in fight kits. So that might be new. Um, there's a bunch of stuff, you know, who's who's going to be there. It's going to be like an international fight week. Just not international fight week. It's UFC 200. They gotta have something planned big. They gotta have something planned big, and you know, I'm just excited to to see what they have planned. You know, I, I, I'm a fan in that in that sense of the game. But you know, don't get it mistaken. You know, April 13 is a big day. I got a big fight, and I can't wait to go out there and uh, show the world.